In this lecture, we're going to cover the NGIF and NG switch directives. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to conditionally add or remove an element from the DOM using the NGIF directive. And you're also going to know how to conditionally add or remove elements from the DOM using the NG switch directive. The NGIF directive is used when you want to display or remove an element based on a condition. If the condition is false, the element the directive is attached to will be removed from the DOM. If the condition is true, the element the directive is attached to will be displayed in the DOM. Now, an important note, it doesn't hide the element using some hidden property or some CSS, but it actually completely removes the element from the DOM. If you're inspecting your DOM using the developer tools, you wouldn't see this HTML in your DOM. So let's use this in an example. We've taken the same code sample that we used in the NG4 lecture, but changed it slightly. Each person now has an age as well as a name. And then if we run it, we can see that as well as the name, we're printing the age in brackets to the right. What I want to do is I only want to show the name or the person if their age is less than 30. So we can do that with the ng if directive and the syntax is so. So we use star small case ng capital I if and then it's equal to and we have an expression. Now the expression is evaluated in, in context. So right now, because we're looping over people, we have the person variable. We, this expression can contain the person variable. It can also just refer to any property or function on the component it's attached to. So now we're saying that only show this li element if the person we're looping over has an age of less than 30. So now if we stop and restart, we're now seeing only Dave Myers because he is 21. Now you might notice me doing something a bit strange here. I've added an ng4 onto the ul tag. So actually it's repeating a ul and a single li for each person in people. Now the reason I've done that is because you can't have two structural directives on the same element. So the code in front of you is illegal because we have an ng4 and an ng if on the same element. That's not allowed. So that's why I've split this thing up into two separate elements. So that's ng if. Let's have a look at ng switch. Let's imagine we wanted to print people's names in different colors depending on whether they are from the UK, the USA, or perhaps Hong Kong. So if I scroll down, I have a sample component which we're going to use to demonstrate ng switch. So they have another people array. This time they have a name, an age, and a country. Now let's imagine we wanted to print people's names in different colors, depending on whether they are from the UK, the USA, or Hong Kong. With Twitter Bootstrap, we can change the text color by using the text danger, text success, and text warning and text primary classes. So we could solve this problem by having a series of ng if statements. Now to save time, I'm just going to copy and paste some code in. So here again, we have an ng4 on the ul, and then we have an li. The first one, if the person.country is equal to UK, we're going to show a class of text success, and then the person name and person country. And then if they're from the USA, we're gonna show primary, then the same text, Hong Kong, then danger, and then the same text. And if they're not from any country, any of these countries anyway, we're just gonna show it with a class of warning. And also let's add this tag to our main directive. So now if we run the application, so it's at least working. It seems like it's a reasonable solution. Well, that is until we start looking at our else clause. So for each country that we perhaps don't have, we need to add it to our else clause. And you can imagine if you have 
a lot of options, this can just expand out to be really, really large. Most languages, including JavaScript, have a language construct called a switch statement to solve this kind of problem. And Angular also provides us with a similar functionality via something called the ng switch directive. This directive allows us to render different elements depending on a given condition. In fact, the ng switch directive is actually a number of different directives working together, like so. So firstly, on our main UL, I'm going to add another directive called, well, ng switch in this case. So the ng switch directive takes as input, so we part, we wrap it in the square bracket syntax. It takes as input the country of the person. And then we replace our ng if directives with ng switch case directives. And then in place of the final ng if expression, we just add the directive ng switch default. And with ng switch default, if none of the other conditions match and it falls through, it will just always render the last element there. So the key difference between this solution and the one with the ng if is that we evaluate the expression only once. We only need to check person country once in this top ng switch directive here. And then based on the result of that, it chooses the appropriate element from this list to display. Based on the value, so if the person country is UK, it will render this one. If it's USA, the second, HK the third, anything else, the fourth. Now if we stop and restart, we can see it's rendering out the same result as before. And I just want to say a quick note. The use of ng switch here is just for example, and it's not really an efficient way of solving this problem. So normally we would either use the ng style or ng class directives, which we'll cover in the next lecture. In summary, with ng if we can conditionally add or remove an element from the DOM based on a condition. And if we are faced with multiple conditions, a cleaner alternative to multiple nested ng if statements is the ng switch series of directives.